In previous tutorials, you have learned how to control the structure and flow of a program by using the Do Together and Do in Order blocks. In today's lesson, we're going to look at another powerful tool, the If Else block. Before we set up our world, let's take a look at the final product. So I'm going to go ahead and run this, and we see our penguin faces the hole, and whoop, he disappears down inside. So let's see if we change the hole to a little bit smaller, what's going to happen. So now I've got a much smaller watering hole. I'm going to run it again. This time the penguin moves over, but the penguin can't fit, so the penguin says drat. So this is actually relatively simple to set up in code, so let's go ahead and get started. So go ahead and start Alice by double-clicking the icon on the desktop, and then we are going to choose the Snow World. I'm going to double-click on it. And luckily, this is a very easy world to set up. We're only going to add a couple of objects. So let's go ahead and set up our scene. So I'll click on the Set Up Scene button. And I'm going to do Search Gallery. And I'm going to type in Penguin. And I'm going to use an adult penguin for this. I'm going to double click on it so it goes to the center of the world. And the only other object I need is a watering hole. So there's my watering hole. I'm going to drag it in. And watering holes start out pretty big, so I'm going to move it over a little bit. I want to make it smaller, so I'm going to click on the Resize tool. And I'm going to shrink it down so that it's more penguin sized. I'm going to click back on the default button and just move it over to the side a little bit. And that's it. That's our setup for this world. So I'm going to click back on the Edit Code button. And let's go ahead and add some code. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the penguin is chosen because I want the penguin to, first of all, turn towards the watering hole. So I'm going to use the Turn to Face block and drag it in. I want it to turn towards the watering hole. And then I want it to move to the watering hole. So I'll drag that block in and watering hole. So the penguin is going to first turn to face it and then move toward it. Before I test it, I'm going to go ahead and save it. I'll call it um, Snow World and click Save. Okay, let's run our, our program so far. Click Run and the penguin turns towards the watering hole and moves to it. What we want to have happen is if the hole is big enough, we want the penguin to dive into it or, or fall into the watering hole. But if it's not big enough, we want the penguin to say drats. So in order to do that, we need to, to add a if else block. So if you see down here, you see the if block. I'm going to drag that up. And it's asking me to pick either true or false. It doesn't matter. We're going to change these anyway, but we're going to just start with true. Okay, so now here's my if block, if else block. So what we want to say is if the width of the penguin is less than the width of the watering hole, or the watering hole is wider than the penguin, have the penguin drop in. So this is going to look kind of complicated, but we're going to take it piece by piece. So the first thing we're going to do is use, look at this true block here and click the arrow next to it. And we can see a lot of things. We're going to start with the relational decimal number because a penguin width and a watering hole width can be decimal numbers. And we want to check to see if one thing is greater than the other. You can see you can choose uh, less than, less than or equal to. I can choose if two things are the same or if they're not equal to each other. Notice that in computer science and Alice, if you're testing if two things are equal to each other, you use two equal signs. But for right now, we're going to stick with this greater than symbol. And I'm going to pick any two numbers. It doesn't matter what you pick because we're going to change them in a second anyway. Okay, so now again we want to see if the watering hole width is greater than the penguin's width. So let's change our object menu to the watering hole. And this time we've been using these procedures. We're going to use this functions tab. And if I click on functions, I see all these gets where I can access the properties of the different objects. Well, what I want to know about is the width of the watering hole. So I'm going to use the get width. And I'm going to drag, and you can see the two um, statements are highlighted. I want to drag this width into the first um, 
section here. So now it says if the get width of the watering hole, we want to see if it's greater than the penguin's width. So we're going to change the object menu to the penguin. And now I have penguin get width. And I'll drag that up into the second part. So now it says if this statement here is true. So if the watering hole's width is greater than the width of the penguin, well, we want the penguin to fall into the watering hole. So we're going to go back to procedures, and we're going to use the penguin move. We're going to have the penguin move down 10 meters. Now, if the watering hole, if this is not true, so the watering hole is not greater than the penguin, well, the penguin can't fit into the watering hole. So we want the penguin to say, we'll use a custom text string, we want to say drats. Okay, so if the width is bigger, we'll have the penguin move down, otherwise we'll have the penguin say drats. So let's go ahead and first save this. So I'm going to hit Control S to save it, and I'm going to run. Penguin goes, and you see it dropped in because the width of the watering hole is greater than the width of the penguin. Well, let's see if we can change the width of the watering hole. Let's go back to setup scene. And I want to make this watering hole smaller than the width of the penguin. So I'm going to click on the penguin. And I see that the width of it is 0.43. So I want to make the width of my watering hole less than that. So right now it's 1.43. I'm going to double click on it and make it how about 0.4. I'll hit enter and it shrinks it down. Let's go back to edit code and let's run it again. Penguin moves toward it. It says drats because it's too wide to fit in the watering hole. So this is a very quick look at if else statements. Um, they are very powerful tools. You can have your program do different things depending on conditions. So I urge you to experiment with this tool. The next time we'll look at making our own methods in Alice.